eventually had a 99% decline. At some point, the population size will be so low that they, they get underneath a threshold. Nature can't make turtles as fast as we're killing them. have nearly lost 40% of all remaining leatherback nesters on the planet, which were until just a few years ago in French Guiana. And we've seen a decline of 99 plus percent. I mean, it's hard to even say that sentence. It's an extraordinary loss. And we pretty much know why. And if the, the numbers are correct right now, which is uh, the amount of nests you mentioned is maybe a thousand or maybe two thousand in total, uh, to get back to that number uh, will take years, decades even. So this also resulted in the IUC and red list stated had to be revised to endangered. So this really raised a lot of attention throughout the whole region. Because the climate is changing, uh, the, the uh, food availability for these animals at the places where they forage might also be changing. So it's possible that they can't find enough food. And that means that they don't have enough energy to nest every year or every two years. The role of the letterback in our ecosystem is that the letterback is eating jellyfish, as you all know. But if you don't have the letterback, you will have an overconsumption of the jellyfish. So the countries that are in need of the fish for their income generation, their food, um, they will have a problem because if you don't have the letterback anymore, the jellyfish will eventually eat all the fish that we have in our waters. So it is really important that we really have to tackle this as well, especially how we know how many um, organizations, fisher folk, communities are also relying on the letterback as an income source, really like a sustainable income source for them. Leatherbacks are what we call patch feeders. They don't just hang out on shore um, munching on stable assets like seagrass beds and coral reefs. They travel huge distances, planetary scale difference distances, and so for months, they travel to the upwellings of Mauritania, for example. And a warming ocean, slowing currents, things that are associated with a changing climate are also changing the distribution and abundance of plankton in these uh, upwellings and other ocean features. And we worry that when leatherbacks finally get where they're going to return to their non-nesting areas, that that food source is not as abundant or as seasonally predictable uh, as it might uh, have been over the course of millennia, literally. It is very important to protect the letterback on a regional level because as you know, every country has its own legislation, laws, rules, what you can and cannot do. But the letterback is a migratory species, so the letterback goes all the way to Canada to forage over there, and then it comes all the way to the region, onto the wider Caribbean region, with the focus on Suriname, Guyana, French Guiana, and Tobago as the main nesting beaches of the letterback. So if we don't protect it as a region, it will be very hard to know what are the threats, um, what can we do, how can we mitigate this. So we had to take action as soon as possible, in which we had to develop a regional action plan. Whitecast did conduct a survey of 33 countries in the wider Caribbean where leatherbacks nest. And I think what was most surprising to me is the consistency of results. On land, the largest, most significant threats remain habitat loss, pollution, harassment, lighting, the sorts of things that even egg collection, you know, which we should have been done with that decades ago. <laughs> This survey really illuminated what we sort of already knew, but we don't always have the data to underpin it. And that threat is fisheries. It's complicated, it's likely to be expensive, 
But if the point is to recover an animal that has peacefully lived on this planet for a hundred million years till we started messing with it. So bycatch is a really big issue. And of course I can speak to, you know, the bycatch in Canada um, primarily, but what I've heard, I work with um, a lot of partners here, um, such as Tangley Whales um, in Newfoundland, where they actively release entangled leatherback sea turtles. And they've said the same thing that, um, when leatherback sea turtles are entangled, they they can't they're not the same as whales, and they're at more um, risk of drowning. And so, it's something that needs to be done urgently when they are entangled to rescue them. And because there is a a really like um, a short time period to save them, that's why bycatch is really a big issue here with um, leatherback sea turtles because um, it can ultimately lead to their death. So the detangler tool or line cutter tool um, was produced in collaboration with um, tangly whales I mentioned. What the tool looks like is it's sort of like a U-shaped hook. There's two blades on it and you can attach poles to the end. So if you're on your vessel and you, you know, you've caught a um, leather back in, in the long line or, or any net, you can easily put the pole overboard and um, cut away at the the net that is tangling the leatherback sea turtles with doing minimal harm to your your gear and also no harm to the turtles. So we've been involved in I think consultations and stuff with with bycatch reduction before yes it's an ongoing um, initiative really because there have been um, researchers that have come and we so bycatch is, a, is an issue here um, but it's something that we're still trying to um, get around and get the proper solutions in place. The Eska for Kenny Holders that send meer visits the helemaal buiten de tsunami rivier en komende rivier moeten vissen. Dat is zee visserij eigenlijk. Maar die beefy dat is meer voor binnenvaart. Dat is uh, uh, vissen in een tsunami rivier of uh, kongoeien of elders uh, in de rivieren dan kan je zeggen. Het zijn internationale betrekkingen die we hebben en ik vind dat, dat we zeker als land Suriname de nodige maatregelen treffen om dan te beschermen. Natuurbeheer doet een aantal activiteiten. Um, de belangrijke activiteiten zijn educatie en voorlichting, dat we, dat we jaarlijkse sessies doen met de community, met de scholen, om mensen bewust te maken waarom het belangrijk is om de ledderbek te beschermen. Als tweede doen wij monitoring, dat is het verzamelen van data, van de gelegde nesten, stroopde nesten. Um, Jaguar attacks zijn ook onderdeel van uh, zo'n data, maar we doen ook enforcement. Enforcement heeft te maken met uh, zorgen ervoor dat zo min mogelijk nesten gestroopt worden. Hallo, mijn natuurbeheer mag geen grappen daarmee. Ik moet bij winst kijken van mijn natuurbeheer bij de media, zodat ik haar moet roepen van die. En je moet pech hebben dat je in het begin van het seizoen bent gaan stropen en bent opgepakt. Je wordt opgesloten van het hele seizoen, dan ben je niet aan wie zelfs strand. De lichtstranden liggen langs de zee, dus je gaat sowieso vaarmateriaal nodig hebben. Maar je hebt hier ook wat je nodig hebt, is de kennis. We hebben dan ook uh, meer het financiële middelen ook nodig om het project eigenlijk uit te voeren. Ons doel is eigenlijk om het geheel jaar te kunnen monitoren, want door klimaatsverandering krijg je ook, krijg je ook een verschuiving in het legseizoen. En het is heel belangrijk om dan vanaf januari tot december te monitoren, om te kijken okay, waar is die verschuiving. Wat zijn de recente ontwikkelingen ten aanzien van hoe stropers te werk gaan? Nou, we kunnen bepaalde interne informatie niet kwijtraken, maar we weten omdat we ook we krijgen de informatie, we weten, hoe, we weten nu al zelf wat de strategieën zijn voor de komende seizoen om het te doen. Er zijn verschillende modellen bij de stropers. Wanneer het schildpad al gelegd heeft en weg is gegaan, dan komen de stropers toch uh, om het uit te graven. En er zit ongeveer 80, 90 eieren in een nest. Vorig jaar hebben we nog aanhoudingen gedaan. Uh, gewoon in een, in een lijnbus, in een, hand, in een handtas onder kleren en dergelijke. Men probeert steeds nieuwe wegen te creëren om stroperij toch nog uh, te laten doorgaan. In Suriname is het besluit al in, in, al in uitvoering een stroper aangehouden met 
delen van schildpadden of schildpadden maakt niet uit, krijgt geen boete. Hij krijgt een gevangenisstraf en boete. Dus buitenproces in Suriname ten aanzien van zielschildpadden, wildlife crime, is er niet. Je gaat direct de bak in. We consider the regional action plan as our success story because in the regional action plan we have more than four countries representing as the focal countries. So these are Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago and French Guyana. WhiteCast is like the umbrella organization for sea turtles throughout the whole wider Caribbean region. So with that partnership we actually had brought this to a bigger group of persons and stakeholders so that countries that also are involved are France, Canada, USA which also got us more support in why it is so important. So at the end, we actually have 10 countries that have been helping out with all the sea turtle experts, which were helping us to develop the regional action plan, how to take action and how to implement the activities. I think the uh, expectation of this regional action plan was to um, try and figure out what needed to be done in order to protect these species outside of just their nesting beaches. So there are always consequences, especially when you lose an apex predator uh, like the leatherback. Uh, things will cascade and fail in ways that we probably can't always model or predict. And I think that's another reason why you just do your best to succeed. It's not like these problems are dropped on us from Mars. You know, we just, we, we created this problem. So by definition, we can solve it. And I think that's that's the most important thing. And if we if we really stick to that narrative, I don't think we have to worry that we'll fail. Makes this project unique is it's very, very concrete. We know what to do. We know that, that we need to reduce bycatch. We know we need to reduce poaching. And with support from uh, donors uh, that can actually, actually facilitate us doing that, we can make this difference. We can talk to these fishers. We can test different kinds of nets. Uh, we can talk to communities. We can work on solutions that allow uh, them to focus on different uh, ways of uh, earning money. So for, for any funder, I, I think it would be important to realize, how do you say that? What zou je, hoe zou je het in het Nederlands zeggen? Uh, dat je met uh, een donatie aan dit project gewoon een gigantisch verschil kunt maken in of die dieren het gaan overleven of niet.